Um, you're not a Definitely psychic, are you? But but you but you do something related for your job. I do. First of all, let me just say that um, I was previously a clinical psychologist, um, and then started to entertain using psychology. Um, and sort of mind trickery and things like that. So um, I find it quite disturbing that people would would go in their time of grief to to, to someone who's not qualified in bereavement counselling and who could uh, potentially move them forward past their grief and, uh, and 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 back into normality, if you will. Although I guess if it's if it works, if it's successful, and if it makes them feel better, is is that is that any matter? A good point. Um, the, the we do have a you know. A, a definite road towards recovery um, through bereavement and counselling. Um, psychics don't necessarily, uh, they're not regulated, they, they, they can't necessarily give people the support they need. Um, and, and, and in that chance, you're rolling a dice, you know, you're, you, if, if, you're, if you roll the dice, you might get a psychic that gives you a, a great reading, everything hits, you move forward, through your bereavement, and, and that's a uh, you know stage that, that most people would go through through their bereavement counselling. Um, but you're doing so at a risk; it might it might not work. Whereas if you went to see a specialist, you you might well end up uh, on the road to recovery a lot sooner. I'm not saying you, you will judge anybody on this, but uh, Tom, our text that we read out earlier on was saying that he believes people who think that these are genuine without any evidence are, are being naive. Um, do you think it is naivety, or do you think there is? just a wish and a will from all of us to just discover the things we don't know. And in a sense, you don't know any better than me or anybody else whether these people could potentially have the skills, they say, because you, that, you can't prove a negative. Well, that's, that's correct. Um, essentially, I, I wouldn't call people naive. Um, we all have a, a want to believe in something. You know, we, all, we all have this urge to, to understand the world right around us much better than we do. Um, and, and for some people, uh, that could be a quick answer. It could be that they they go and um, believe in it in the psychic realm, and that answers all of their questions. Or if you're sort of more analytical or scientifically minded, it's that you know we don't have all of the answers, but we try to understand the world w with experience. Um, as far as sort of um, m my my belief in psychics and whether I know they exist or not, um, I, I personally don't. Oh, I've, I've never had any evidence that the, that the psychic um, exists in the sense that they're communicating with with any sort of afterlife. I, I know I know all the tricks that psychics use. I know the the different types of phrases, the generalizations, the the cold readings, and all of these things because I use them up in my own job. But as an and cold tool. readings are very interesting. For those who don't know, just explain briefly cold readings. And I've I've, I've seen this in action, and it's it's actually remarkable when you it, see people it, do those these cold readings. I mean, Simon, this is a huge, a massive um, sort of discussion. I could talk for hours about sort of cold reading and the techniques. Essentially, cold reading um, is a way to use either statistical analysis, um, people's age. Um, how they look, the, roughly what their profession might be based on on their physical appearance, things like that, mixed in with 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 Barnum statements, with statements that refer to everyone. You know, most of us probably have a, a scar on our left knee, or mm. or we, we've all had a, a generalised experience. Because as diverse as we all are in the world, we have common problems, common ailments. We interact with things in 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 the same way, but we, we all like to think of ourselves as very individual people and we are to an extent but in those generalities psychics can exploit those can make them seem like they're telling you things about you specifically that actually are more broad sweeping than we might recognize but then when we go when, when we move away from cold reading i mean one of the best cold readings i ever saw was a was a guy on television who was trying to prove the world of the psychic to be fake who was telling people um you know you you've got a great sense of humor and you take life in your stride i don't think you i don't think you suffer fools gladly um i think you've had a lot of pain in your life it's actually quite pain quite and it was going on and on. So we all said yes this is us this is us and of course everybody there but then it then there's a big leap from that general and, and and very generic advice and thoughts to very specific and if somebody says you had the loss of a husband um 10 years ago and he's watching over you now and and, and he's with me how do i mean are they just do they just strike lucky when that happens or, or what i mean i mean it's, it's very difficult to analyze a situation that's not only, not only hypothetical but we where we can't have the full information and a lot of the time we don't have the information when we hear from someone who's had a very successful reading um what we do know is there have been studies um um one of the one that speaks to mind is one uh, conducted by james randy and james randy um had someone have a reading 
um, in, in private, um, and they said to the, the person having the reading, how accurate do you think that was? And they said, oh, 90, 95%. He got my mother's name. He got that she'd been dead for 11 years. And this did all of these great hits. But what was also happening is that the reading was being transcribed, and the transcription of that reading actually showed that the, the psychic was wrong more often than right, was uh, was fishing for information, was trying to get names. Is that is that an F? Is that a P name? What what, what right. kind of sound is that? And then the person tells the information, forgets they've told them the information, and the psychic then feeds it back to them as a, as a hit, as a, as a working um, idea that apparently has come from them and not from the person themselves. Um, and, and looking at the transcripts, the, the guy's face was ashen because he genuinely believed that all of these things were, were direct hits, that the, the psychic had not waffled, he had not probed for information. And it's because our brains are the way that they are. You know, we, we remember things that are, are relevant to us, and especially if we go to a psychic in a vulnerable state, uh, if we're bereaved or, or we're looking for answers, we tend to dismiss the things that the psychic says that simply don't hit, don't have any, any relevance to us. And the things that do hit and, and do mean things to us, we, we latch onto them, and then you end up with someone walking away from that reading and saying, "Do you know what? That guy he told me he told me my mother's maiden name. He told me there was a ring behind the cabinet, and you know, and all of these types of things that potentially I know we, we can't argue the case because, unless we have a transcript of the reading. But but potentially from what the study show, um, it could just be sheer luck." generalization feeding back information people have already have uh, and paul just given. lastly on this i mean because because of the views you hold it, it's worthwhile just exploring a tiny bit more just briefly in terms of if you have any spirituality in your life at all i mean do you do you sense that we are spiritual beings but those who harness this amongst the world of the psychic take spirituality many steps too far um i, I personally am not a spiritual person um i i have been in my past um, but but um, but I, I find I think personally that that the fact that we I believe there is no afterlife because we, we've never been presented with evidence, um, and it's it's always on the, the people bringing the evidence, the people that say there is an afterlife to to provide the the proof, uh, the burden of proof is on them. Um, but I think there's something very freeing about thinking there isn't an afterlife because we have to live the life we have now to the fullest extent. 